crafting show, Craft Versations. This month, my guest is the beautiful and illustrious Sinead Persaud. You may know her from Shipwrecked Comedy, i.e. a Telltale Vlog and or Kissing in the Rain, and she's great. Yay! Yay! You may not know, but Sinead is a big Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones fan. Yes. So yes. we have that in common, mm -hmm. at least the Lord of the Rings part. So I thought an appropriate craft for us to make today would be dragon eggs. And I'm really excited about it. It's going to be so good. So if you want to craft along with us at home, you're going to need some things. Here's what you'll need. Some thumbtacks. You don't necessarily need gold. We're actually going to use silver. But you need about 300 per egg if you're using a foam egg this size. You'll need a foam egg. And you will need fingernail polish in whatever color you deem worthy for your dragon egg. That's all. So that's what you need. I found this craft on Pinterest, surprise, mm -hmm. with a tutorial that I will link below. You can make it with regular paint, but I thought nail polish would provide some fun opportunities yeah. for fun colors. So let's get started. Before you paint, which I did last night, you should lay out all your tacks on like a styrofoam or a piece of cardboard or something in rows if mm -hmm. you can. It's hard to do rows of like a lot, but try because the tutorial said that once you start painting it's hard to tell what you've painted and what you haven't, so that helps. So do we do like a solid color and then glitteriness over it? Yeah, that's what okay. I think seems to work the best. I just love this color. Yeah, I like My that. Favorite. I really like this. Teal! Glitter. Do I want to do the some gold sort of like... gold is so fierce though. The gold is pretty good. Ugh. Now it's hard to decide. I'm having a really hard time. I think I have to go with this one. I think you should. I yeah. like that one. Okay, That's really cool. Good. I think I will go with this. So, Sinead. Hi. How's it been going with you these days? Everything is going all right. All I right. I have a Disney annual pass now. Me too. Yay. We should go to Disneyland sometime. How about tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> okay, great. We're going tomorrow. Yeah. So many people were so excited for you to be on the show. Aww. Some, one person said they were really excited for you because they love you in Shipwrecked, but they feel like sometimes you are not as visible as some of the <laughs> other members of Shipwrecked. So they're excited true. to get to know more about you. Yay! Would you like to um, tell us a bit about how that all got started? Because you... Shipwrecked? Yeah. Cause sure. Because it was like your idea, right, to do that post sketch? Yeah. I went to NYU for film and TV production, mm -hmm. and I focused mainly on writing. I always liked like acting and stuff, but writing was my thing. And so I met my friend, Zen, who will probably never watch this, so I don't mind saying his name. Mm -hmm. Zen! And we decided, we met while we were interning at the Colbert Report, and um, we he had a very similar sense of humor as me, and we were like, we loved Portlandia. Mm -hmm. So we decided that why not, like, make our own sketches like since we were in a great city and we had all these resources we should just like make our own sketch show yeah so we both started writing like dozens of sketches and one of the my favorite ones that I wrote was the Edgar Allan Poe buys Girl Scouts one mm -hmm. and I was like oh my gosh Girl Scout cookies yeah. not actual Girl, Girl Scouts, Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> Girl Scouts. that's a different sketch <laughs> not a very fun one um so I wrote that one, and my idea was to, like, have Sean eventually come to New York and, like, film it in Greenwich Village, which how, was not going to happen. How and did then, you know that Sean would be such a good Edgar Allan Poe? I don't know. I've always just wanted to, like, write stuff for us to be in mm -hmm. together because I know that he's such a great actor. Mm -hmm. So I wrote that, and I was like, okay, so that's probably not going to happen. Maybe we can film it if we go back home to our hometown, Massachusetts, because... We live close by to Salem, Massachusetts, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of, like, cool ambiance there. Mm -hmm. But that never happened, and I forgot about it, mm -hmm. and I moved out here As and one graduated. Does. And uh -huh. I still always had dreams of creating a sketch show, but it just seemed unreasonable. Mm -hmm. But then I, um, I was in the NBC Page program, as everybody knows this part of the story, <laughs> and I met Eulene. Uh -huh. um, and towards the end of it, we were kind of freaking out because we both didn't want to go into office TV production jobs. Yeah. And I wanted to, like, get more into acting and writing, and Eulene wanted to just direct. Yeah. So we tried to collaborate on a sketch, but it didn't really work out because it was just too hard. And then I told Eulene about this one sketch that I had, and since Sean was out here, it was 
seemed very easy to make this one. Mm -hmm. So um, we tweaked it just a tiny bit, Mm -hmm. found a cool location in Orange County, Newport Beach, Mm -hmm. and just shot it. And And a few days later, a few days before the shoot, we were um, just trying to, um, Yulene actually was like, we should like do more since we're there. So we started brainstorming ideas for a Telltale vlog. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting outside of the Tonight Show alone in my page uniform with a notebook waiting for the guests to arrive for that day, uh-huh. just, like, scribbling notes about what, like, my character Lenore would be talking about That's... if she was, like, a ghost complaining. And That's hilarious. And then from there, we were like, what are we going to do with these sketches? Yeah. Um, we could put them on Funny or Die. We could make a YouTube channel. Uh-huh. We decided on YouTube channel. And I'm so glad you did. Yay! Yeah, and then it kind of kept going from there. And now we have our little aesthetic that we do, which is like historical literary comedy. Yeah. Slash whatever we want. I like that <laughs> aesthetic. And I loved a Telltale vlog when I saw it because Yulene had, well, Yulene and I had a mutual friend mm-hmm. who kind of had reached out on her behalf when you guys were starting to think about Kissing in the Rain right. and um, linked me to a Telltale blog and I thought, you guys were so funny. I loved it so much and I especially loved your characterization of Lenore. Yay. Which I feel like is kind of a difficult thing to pull off. Well, A, I just loved <laughs> that it was like so not what I was expecting, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I do think that that like kind of character can be hard to pull off sometimes mm-hmm. without being like obnoxious or I don't know but I thought you did so so well with it and I thought it was hilarious and thank you yeah and then obviously I thought Sean was very good as well so I was like heck yeah I'll be on board with these people how's the painting going it's good I'm on row two nice (laughs) well done I know it's gonna take a while it's okay we got time we got time to chat it's very relaxing I forgot to mention to our viewers at home last night when I was doing a little test running, I realized that nail polish melts styrofoam. (laughs) So I hear that you had a, um, an experience with Stephen Colbert that I am somewhat jealous of. Oh my gosh. Would you like to share that experience with us? Yeah. So, um, as I said earlier, I interned at the Colbert Report when I was in college, Mm -hmm. my junior year, and it was really fun. It was like a lot of work. It was like basically being a PA. It was really cool. Um, but one of the exciting parts of the internship was we all the interns got to sit down and like have a talk with Steven towards the end of our oh internship I didn't realize that because we were all like allowed to ask questions and stuff Mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure we were only supposed to ask one but I raised my hand and I asked all of mine really really quickly (laughs) I was like Hi, so you like Lord of the Rings and I like Lord of the Rings and um, what I just wanted to know like when did you start reading the books and like who's your favorite character and who would you want to be friends with and where would you live in, in Middle Earth and why? Oh my god. And he just like was very, very like into it and he was like, oh my god. Well, I started reading them when I was 13 and I was like, me too. He like went into this long explanation about why Faramir would be his best friend in Middle Earth. And it was just like really heartfelt. And he was just like, I just feel a lot of common with him. And he's just like such a good guy caught in the wrong situation. Oh my gosh. gosh. And then he said he would live in Rivendell. That's incredible. And it was amazing. And I was just very pleased and and surprised that I was even able to ask anything. Yeah, that's amazing. Because I never ask anything in like Q&As or like... Like, I, I would either. never approach a celebrity. Same. But this was, like, I just had to. Elijah Wood was other. on one of the nights. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought that was Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> it was just my Elijah Wood noise. It's fine. Um, but I wasn't um, scheduled to work that night. No. But he was there. So I emailed, like, everyone. And I was like, does anybody want to split <gasps> shifts with me? But nobody did. No. That's so sad. I'm so sorry. Yeah. You guys are going to start a fun new little thing over at Shipwrecked, yeah? Yeah. It's really exciting. It's unlike anything we've done before. Mm. It is a podcast. Yay! Um, so it's just really hard to get, like, really high-quality stuff out there as often as we'd like. Yep. Sure is. Because <laughs> money and jobs and just scheduling and stuff. Yeah. And, um, but I really, like, don't like going so long without doing anything shipwreck-related. Mm-hmm. So, decided to do a little, 
a little podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just going to be talking about the sort of things you'd think shipwreck people would be talking about. Mm-hmm. Books, TV, being nerdy, fan fiction, That's our awesome. projects, mm-hmm. people in our projects. Yeah, it hasn't really taken its, like full shape yet mm-hmm. but i'm excited for it i think that's and awesome i hope people listen and like are just happy i'm sure to interact on a different oh yeah medium type than youtube i thought you were just gonna stop it i'm just happy i just, I just <laughs> want everybody to be happy <laughs> that's so nice um, i'm sure they will be happy yeah that's um, awesome i'm so excited about that i hope i get to be on the podcast i think you're invited <laughs> yeah who is your favorite person named Sean and why? <laughs> I really like Sean Bean. I like Sean Bean too. <laughs> Just since we were talking about that. <laughs> and he spells his name in the same way as my other favorite Sean, which I guess is my brother. <laughs> How long have you been brother and sister? A long time. I have a very clear memory of my little sister being born Uh and Sean and I eating McDonald's and, like, waiting to see her. Aw, that's really cute. So that's how long we've been brother and sister. I told Sean this when he was on the show, but when I first watched the Telltale vlog, I Mm -hmm. wasn't sure if you guys were married or brother (laughs) and sister. I know, a lot of people did, and and I didn't realize that until after, like, we filmed it. It was like... Oh, yeah? And then, no, I remember on set, I think... There was, like, a part where Poe gives me, like, a flower to uh-huh. apologize, and Yulene was like, I don't know, maybe that's right, it weird. Feels a and little... I was like, oh, yeah. No. Like, I do, no. I do feel like I saw some people be like, oh, cute. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's weird. I never would have even thought about that. And then a couple people, like, commented on it. They're like, are you guys married? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Sometimes I'm still shocked by that because I feel like I'm still 14 uh-huh. and being married is like, I'm like, I don't look old enough to be married. Well, I don't know. I mean, that wasn't, I don't know. I think it's just mm-hmm. the knowing that you have the same last mm-hmm. name and that immediately you're like, wait, hold on a second. Because also Sean had a giant mustache on That's and you can't true. really tell what he actually looks That's like. That's funny. And I'm <laughs> glad that we've cleared it up. They are not married. He is merely my kin. Obviously, you guys are still moving towards the dinner party Mm -hmm. thing, which you will also... You are writing. Yeah, it's been one of the hardest things to write that I've ever... How so? Um, I've never tried to write, like, a straight mystery before, Mm -hmm. and it really gives me a new respect for mystery writers. Mm Mm-hmm. I like Agatha Christie and Poe. Don't think I could do it. Yeah, it's. Not I've easy. been like Googling things I never thought I would Google, like how to surprise people. <laughs> <laughs> like, surprise! How to plot. I'm <laughs> like, Aww. I went to school for this. I shouldn't be having to, like. Wow. Well. Um, but it's just crazy how, like, um, how hard it is to, like, structure it mm-hmm. and keep it, like, shipwrecked friendly. A lot of stuff that we've been doing is trying to think of our favorite mysteries and mm-hmm. the twists and turns in that and try to, like, be like, okay, so what's, like, a version of that we could do? Right. What are some of your favorite mysteries? Well, mm-hmm. I really like Clue. That's oh, yeah? one of my favorite movies That's since great. I was little. Yeah. One of my favorite books is Ten Little Indians or And Then There Were None. I've never Agatha Christie. read that. It's really good and really creepy. Sean gave me a book when I was little called The Westing Game, which is really good. Uh It's a really good mystery that I I name, like, one character in all of my stuff after, like, a character from that. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you already? Um, Yeah. In, in, like, pilots I've written. Oh, that's awesome. And, like, movies. Like, big stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm determined to get the name in to something. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is one of my favorite movies besides... Lord of the Rings. It's not you, real mystery. You are also a Veronica Mars fan, yes? Yeah. I think you've been watching iZombie, have you I been? have. Do you like it? Radically. I do like it. I love it. I'm super into it. I've been watching it more as like a procedural though, and not as like... Yeah, it's not really a mystery mm-hmm. so much. Although there are, I mean, mysteries. Yeah. Sort of. I it, with Veronica Mars, it was like... Oh yay, there's a mystery every week, but oh my god, the like overarching right, right, storyline right, right, right. is insane and I just It's so good. It is good. Anybody who hasn't watched it, you're it in is for a good. treat. 
So, so we um talked about Lord of the Rings a little bit. We did. Which we agree on. We so agree on. But you said you did. I thought you watched Game of Thrones. I don't I watch not Game of you Thrones. You didn't. It's well, okay. Here's my saga with Game of Thrones. Okay. I did try to watch it when it first came out. I went to like a viewing party of the first episode. I was very confused. <laughs> And then um, I continued to watch it knowing that it was, like, something that's kind of up my alley in that way. Mm -hmm. But the violence just really bothered me. And after, (coughs) spoiler alert, episode six, when a certain white-haired, terrible character meets a terrible end, I, like, wanted to throw up. I couldn't do it. I didn't want to watch it anymore because... Oh! The, okay. That took me a minute to realize who you were talking about. The crown for the king. I just... Yes. Crown for a king. I That's when my mom it. realized she didn't want to watch it too. Yeah, it really bugged me. I'm that. really bad at... I don't know. I, I was pretty sheltered as a kid in terms of stuff I could watch and I feel like I never developed a desensitation... Desensitive... Desensitized. I never got mm-hmm. desensitized. And that's why I can't watch, like, horror movies or I just, like, I have a really hard time separating it as fiction. Like, it just stays in my brain. And Anyway, so, but then I thought, like, oh, I'll just read the books first so I know, like, what's coming and it won't be as shocking. So I read the first book. And I really did enjoy reading the book quite a lot. But I got stuck in the second book. And I, I know everything that happens because it's all anybody talks about anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, I don't know. I, like, know what's going on in the show. And now people are pretty angry about the show. So I'm like, well, I don't know. It took a while for them to get real riled up about it. I don't know that I want to, like, invest all that time if it's just going to make me angry. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What what do you think about all that stuff? Well, I mean, I watched it when it first came out, like, episodes one through, like, three. Mm -hmm. And I think I was just, like... I was in college, and I was just like, I don't have time for mm-hmm. this. So then, like, a few year, like, two years ago, I think, I watched all of it and caught up and um, watched it all in, like, a few days' time because I had the flu, and I Aww. was just like, this is my life now. <laughs> <laughs> I am Game of Thrones, and it is me. And, um, I mean, there's some stuff in season three, I believe, with a certain character. That really, really disturbed me, and I was just like, I do not like this part. I wish this was not in the show. It's yeah. really making me not want to watch any more of it, yeah. but I did because I liked all the other characters. We all know who I'm talking about. It's Ramsey. Well, um, he's un- gross. Unfortunately, the actor that plays Ramsey plays my favorite character of all time <laughs> in another show, which is Simon Bellamy in Misfits, which if you haven't watched Misfits, the whole thing is on Hulu. Go watch it! It's I'm so gonna. good! gonna i it's, think he's like an adorable little hobbit man he and is so cute i don't know my my love for simon is a little weird if you've only <laughs> seen the first season you're gonna be like you like simon he's like a little bizarre but I'm i don't sure know i'll get it i i love i think that actor does a great job and mm-hmm. i really enjoy that anyway that's a that's a side but that is like stuff that happens in the books and like right. i have to deal with it in order to Whatever. And then there was, like, a scene last year that everybody was upset about that I was also upset about. Well, I was like, this is something that doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. So there are definitely missteps on the show, but Mm -hmm. I keep watching it because it's just... Most of it is so darn entertaining. Mm -hmm. And then there was, aside from that, like, super offensive scene last year, there's um, a character death that I just couldn't stop thinking about really? for weeks. Oh, it was the it was grossest so thing I'd ever seen. I think seen I know what you're talking about. On television and I could not I had nightmares about it. Yeah. I like screamed audibly when it happened, which is the first time I think I've ever done that on TV. Except just... for Veronica Morris. I did that. Um well, yeah, and I just still to this day I, I cannot watch rewatch that episode. Because... I don't know where the line is with shock value. Yeah. I do feel like I don't know like uh, I don't know. It's hard for me. I mm-hmm. feel like we don't maybe need to put things in there just to be shocking or to be yeah. violent. Or I don't know what the benefit of that is at a certain point. I don't. I feel like it could be like it. the showrunners are worried. Like, oh, we don't want to like lose right. our edge this season. Right. It's gonna be even crazier. Right. And I've heard that these 
books, books like four and five, which they're into now, Mm -hmm. are less exciting and a little more, like, boring than the books previous. So they have to add in, like, stuff. More shocking, crazy stuff. Interesting. For the show. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I've liked most of this season so far, except for, you know, some choice choices that they've made that mm-hmm. were very unnecessary. I would love for us to move on to, to uh, playing a game that we always play here on Crappersations. I would if you love would, to. If you would like. It's I would called uh, Hanky Panky, Marry or Kill. <laughs> and uh, moving back to that thing that we both enjoy. Woo! I think I'll give you some Lord of the Rings, fellas. Please do. Who do I want to give <gasps> to you? I mean, there's obviously the obvious choices of, like, Aragorn and Legolas. Everybody knows who I like in Lord of the Rings. Who Everyone I think knows. you also like as well. I do, but I like someone else better. Someone else better who I had five posters of on my Whoa. wall. And might still, no, I think my mom took them down. And a cardboard cutout of. Whoa! Yeah. I had a cardboard cutout, too. And I have the three movie <laughs> posters on my wall. Or do I just want to mix it up and give you some, like, like, like weird characters? Hanky Panky, Marry or Kill, Samwise Gamgee, mm-hmm. Legolas of the Woodland Realm, and uh, Faramir, Aww. Captain of Gondor. That is very, very hard. Because, uh, I mean, Legolas has been my one true love since I was, since I walked out of the theater with Sean. That first time yeah. I saw it. So gotta marry him okay. and spend an eternity just <laughs> with shooting arrows with him. <laughs> but the other two are just such great choices for, like, hanging with. True story. Um, I don't make this game easy. All right. I'm going to have to... I'll kill Sam. <gasps> you will. Yeah. And hanky-panky. Fair mirror. I mean, that's fair. I don't know that I would hanky-panky with Samwise Gamgee. Yeah. I might marry him. He's though. more of a marrying type. He sure is. He's the best. Okay, great. I'm well done. just going to make this. With enough yeah. polish? I'm sorry, I didn't realize it would take the whole bottle. While you home, were... It will take the whole bottle. Thinking of guys to give me, I was thinking about the three main ladies. I'm like, oh, I want to know. What? Because who? they're all so great, too. They are great. I don't know who is the best. Who is the best of the three main Arlen, ladies? Arlen, and... Galadriel. I They're mean, so cool. If I had to, like, pick one to be? Yeah. I think I know. Eowyn. Oh, really? Yeah. Were you, you thinking Galadriel? Galadriel? I love Galadriel, but, like, if I could have played any female character ever, I think I would have played Eowyn. That's really cool. Oh, I can see that. Galadriel seems like kind of a tragic character. She's interesting. I mean, obviously, we don't, like, get to see that much of her in the movies but I think her entire story is very interesting Mm -hmm. I mean I love Kate Blanchett I'm just gonna keep with the fellowship okay and ask between Mary Pippin and Boromir what yeah didn't even give me Frodo no of course not (laughs) I know better Frodo's my favorite (gasps) I know (laughs) that's a bit you didn't know about me (laughs) well sorry Boromir you're out out of there, Boromir. I mean, I like Sean Bean, but Boromir has shown some some tendencies that yeah. maybe are not the most yeah. healthy. He's clearly a little power hungry. Yep. Sorry, the dude. The ring does that to people. That's true. Know if it's he can true. Be truly faulted. Yeah, but Faramir manages to uh, mm-hmm. to stay clear. Oh, so that leaves Merry and Pippin. Interesting. Interesting choice I have before me. You know, I'm going to say I'll hanky-panky with Pippin, because he's super cute. Yes. And I'll marry Mary. (laughs) Cute! I think Mary maybe shows just a little more responsibility. Yeah. Not that Pippin doesn't learn response. He does, but it's a little more childish. Mm -hmm. I think I'll go with Mary as a lifelong partner. Good choices. In high school, I was in a Lord of the Rings email chain, (laughs) and we all had characters, and I was Mary. And I signed it Mary Kate, M E R R Y. Aww. I was Mary because Frodo was already taken by somebody who wasn't even participating. Not okay. <laughs> Very rude. 
for anyone following along, I'm trying to do a second coat of my base color, but I kind of ran out, so it may just be one coat. I've moved on to the glitter. You're doing the glitter! How's it going? It's all right. Am I doing it right? Yeah, I was going to say, in the tutorial it said kind of like to drop it on the top of it and then kind of like smear it around, because if okay. you brush it, it will not look very glittery. Right. Yeah, um, I hope this hatches into a, a real dragon. Wouldn't that be crazy? What if it did, though? Well, I feel like I wouldn't would be do? able to control it. I know. What Just would you like do? Khaleesi. You'd be like, dragon, come listen to me. Get over here, dragon. You'd be like, rawr, no. <laughs> rawr, no. I am going to start on my glitter now, I think. Hannah Morris wants to know what are our top three favorite books or series. Lord of the Rings, obviously. Yes. Same. Obviously. Harry Potter. Obviously. Because... It's just, I know it's very obvious, but I can't lie. They are, those are the two best series of all time. They sure are. For third place, I have like a bunch of possibilities. Oh yeah? I really like a series of unfortunate events. I yeah. always really looked forward to those coming out. Never read those. Really, really fun. They're just so like my style of if I ever wanted to write something, oh, I yeah. would want it to be like that. It's just like hilarious but so dark at the same time that's awesome i but feel like also I would get for into children <laughs> i watched the movie mm -hmm. i liked it the books are man that's really good this glitter is like bringing it how do you feel oh, sweet that is really cute i dig the glitter i like mine yeah i like it it's like subtle but cool I always say that David Copperfield is my favorite oh. book but i haven't read it since i was in high school which has been some years now. Read it. I really love this series. I don't know if anybody will have heard of it, but it's called A Great and Terrible Beauty. That's the first book mm, in the I series. I heard of that. And it's about this girl in like 1800s England who goes to this boarding school and discovers like a portal to another world. What? And she has like these powers, and it's just like. I love Sounds powers. really silly now that I'm saying it out loud, but the book is really like well written and no, complex. That's by awesome. Libba Bray. And I think they were making a movie of it many years ago, but it never came to be. Well, that's very disappointing because mm -hmm. it could have been really cool that's or really sad. terrible, actually. Yeah, so you I never know. know. But those were really good. I suggest checking them out if you have similar tastes as me. I really loved the American Girl books growing Aww. up. Aww. I read them over and over and over again. Those are good. I had Kirsten. <laughs> Which one? Kirsten. I got, Kirsten. like, you know how they had the, like, they had, like, the girl size costumes mm -hmm. of the doll costumes, and I got the birthday one for my birthday, and Aww. I was, like, so excited. I think I'm, like, Molly out of all of them. Yeah. Well, they have a bunch now. Yeah. There used to just be, like, four or five, and now there are a lot. I liked Molly. I always oh, liked Felicity because I wanted her really cool, cool colonial costume. <laughs> and then finally, my Guilty Pleasure book series is the – the books that the show True Blood is based off of, oh, yeah. the Sookie Stackhouse novels, they are they are very entertaining. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to say. Yeah, I know. I was waiting for that. they are entertaining. Yeah, this glitter is, like, making all the difference. Yeah. I'm so very... It's going to be... Please, so hatch, which is my <laughs> word for fetch. So hatch. Gretchen <laughs> Meaner's word for awesome. Yeah. That's appropriate <laughs> for a dragon. Just giant but cheap headphones so I can look more professional when we're taping the podcast. Will anybody see you with the headphones? Just whoever's there. It's just <laughs> gonna be you guys.